our top stories this week. In Colorado, the child protective industry is facing heavy scrutiny from lawmakers after a rash of failures, including several child deaths over the last couple of years. In Colorado's child welfare, officials respond by telling lawmakers that without more money, their problems will continue. In Arkansas, the study is released that paints a picture of a rising number of kids in foster care without enough CPS agents or quality homes to care for them. In Manitoba, Canada, a report from a children's advocate says that provincial child welfare has deteriorated into a chronic state of emergency and is failing the kids with special needs. Louisiana lawmakers are calling for an independent investigation into the child protective industry as a knee-jerk reaction to a kid who was found living in horrible conditions. And in New Mexico, a lawmaker is complaining that the child protective industry hasn't provided requested information so they can be investigated in regards to the living conditions of foster kids in the state. In Florida, thanks to an exemption provided by the child protective industry, criminals can now become daycare and foster care providers. In Australia, CPS agents are overwhelmed by all of the bullshit and petty calls that are coming in. In Connecticut, the child protective industry is vowing to reduce the use of physical restraints and seclusion at its locked facilities for girls and boys in Middleton. And in Indiana, the manager of a child welfare agency is suing the state, claiming that heavy caseloads on CPS agents are violating state law. In Utah, the state is saying that they must recognize two lesbian moms as legal parents. And in Texas, a legislator is still pushing to protect faith-based adoption agencies from having to give your kids to gay couples. According to a new study published in the Journal of Pediatrics, half of U.S. hospitals aren't following proper screening guidelines for determining child abuse in injured children. In New York, adoptees are fighting for access to their birth certificates. And the state of Washington is number one in jailing non-criminal kids for non-criminal offenses such as skipping school or running away from home. In Michigan, the state is now investigating the foster care agency as well as the foster mother who had control of a nine-year-old autistic boy who went missing only to be found dead in the lake. In California, the killer of a two-and-a-half-year-old foster child she was in the process of adopting will not get a new trial. And in Kansas, the federal judge rules that the child protective industry cannot keep secret the results of its internal investigation into the death of a four-year-old boy. In British Columbia, Canada, a judge ruled in favor of a mother who sued the child protective industry after social workers allowed the father who was molesting the kids to visit unsupervised. A foster care provider from Oroville, California was arrested and charged with six sexual acts on a child under 14 years of age. In Tennessee, a CPS agent was charged with unlawful sexual contact with a woman at a home he was investigating. In New Jersey, two CPS agents were attacked while trying to snatch a child from the parents. And finally, tonight, a couple of foster parents are finding themselves in a legal pickle with the state after they lost their home due to bed bugs being brought into the home by a foster child and a botched extermination attempt provided by the child protective industry for these stories and all the latest dirt on the child protective industry visit www.legallykidnapped.com and until next week this is baby lk over and out